Episode 2 Challenge and Reward In this episode, I challenge my old boss to a model boat race, discover a cool thing, and receive a challenge from Casey. Casey challenges a jean shop, I find a movie writing challenge, and Casey and I challenge our assistant to get a bottle of maple syrup to Amsterdam. I got to eat all that candy. My friend Tom is a famous artist, major. He's my favorite artist in the world. He once made an airplane bathroom out of paper that works. Flushing toilet, hot and cold water, all the lights, even the mechanical occupied lock. He made a refrigerator out of plywood from scratch that works. Guns, a McDonald's, the world's largest boombox, a 125th scale raceway, a plywood aircraft carrier, everything works. Casey and I worked for Tom for four years. Our tenure with him ended three years ago, and since then we've learned a few tricks of our own. Go, go, go! He's the master. He's our Yoda. He's taught us everything we know. But Tom Sachs doesn't know shit about building boats. This is the race to go around the sculpture and back. This is the story of a classic Hamilton Burr's duel. The teacher and the student had had a disagreement, and I, the student, demanded satisfaction. But my boat is going to be able to um, go faster than this. You honestly think your boat's going to be faster than mine? Have you seen my rudder speed? Yeah. What I meant to say is paddle speed. The point of contention that led me to mutiny from Tom's boatyard and start my own was in the transmission design. I wanted a nice firm pledge can to put my paddles on. My design involved a pledge can with an axle running through it and paddles mounted to the sides of the can. The video controlled Mini Z Racer would then sit atop the can and propel the can and paddles. A rudder attached to the Mini Z Racer wheels would allow the boat to steer. Tom's transmission used two spray paint can caps duct taped together. I felt there was no way this could provide adequate traction and I could not go along with it. Ready, set, go. The race course is one lap around the statue, beginning and ending at the edge of the reflecting pool. If a racer touches his boat, he must return to the and begin again. To my amazement, Tom's slender boat quickly took the lead, exposing my major design flaw. My transmission used a wet clutch design. Because the pledge can was submerged, my tires slipped on the wet surface. Too much slippage and my batteries would die. Or worse, my paddle wheel would seize and I'd be dead in the water. Neither design worked adequately and we reached a stalemate. Both of us had to put our boat in dry dock and make necessary improvements. The race would continue on shore and in the boathouse. So Tom is still working on his boat and I'm done with mine. We're in the middle of the race. I've made some improvements. Waterproof um, scotch sandpaper strips which are designed for um, bathtubs so you don't slip. I've also shortened the paddles so that it's it displaces less water and it's easier on the car motor. As a final touch, I used a ruler to put greater pressure on the back end of the car, giving it better contact with the pledge can. With no sign of Tom, I relaunched my boat. I expected him to appear at any moment to tear my heart out. My new traction design held and the redesigned rudder and keel gave me the steering I needed. It took about three minutes to complete the circuit. 
uh, I have to be between this line and this line here. This is it. This is the winning. I'm going to go be a good sport and uh, say to Tom, you know, good race and whatnot. But uh, it was an issue of design. Good race. I felt like I had just my dad at arm wrestling. Tom's opening was a smash hit. We raced the little cars for everyone, and the crowd loved it. How do you feel winning the Nazis Midwestern Challenge? I feel great. How do you feel? I'm proud to lose such a champion. Van's a great driver, and, a great, and, a, and he drove with an expertise and precision and strength. The Padawan are Jedi children in training. They even have little lightsabers. I was Tom's Thank assistant you. too once. Thank you. <laughs> Dear Tom and Van, in light of your recent boat construction competition, I pose a new challenge to the both of you. For you, Tom, an opportunity at redemption. And for you, Van, to prove the student has, in fact, surpassed the teacher. The race will begin here, 910 Beach in New London, Connecticut. Tom, Van, you launch from this beach and you must get yourself and your vessel around the New London Ledge Lighthouse and back again. First person to the shore wins, just like the soldiers at the beaches of Normandy. You'll each be given $250. All materials must be purchased from Boaters World. All tools, supplies, etc. must come from here. All construction will happen here. Nana's garage will serve as the boathouse. You both have one day Construct your vessel and map your route. You're free to discuss your ideas with one another and collaborate, or work with total autom autonom autonomy, autonomy, or work with autonomy and hoard your ideas. In addition to engineering, this challenge will test ingenuity, resourcefulness, endurance, and tenacity. I look forward to your acceptance of this challenge. I accept. I accept. Tune in to future episodes of the Nystap Brothers to see the conclusion nautical challenge where Van and Tom battle it out on the high seas of the Long Island Sound. Who will be the victor? Because you would have 
so much more. Don't open it yet. Thank you, man. <laughs> oh my god. This gift is a taunt of the highest order. It's a one-third scale model of a boat I used to crush Tom in a start-from-scratch model boat race a few months ago. A race which Tom, with all of his model-making skills, failed to even finish. After Tom's defeat, Casey threw down the gauntlet. Casey challenged us to race actual boats on a three-mile circuit around the Ledge Lighthouse in New London, Connecticut. And we accepted. I accept. Casey gave us a set of rules to maximize our craftiness. One, a $250 spending limit. Two, all materials must be purchased from Boaters World. Three, we must construct our boats in Nana's garage. And four, our boats had to be constructed in one day. We said fuck all that and boiled the boat construction down to one simple rule. We could race anything we wanted provided it had no more than 10 horsepower. Working for Tom was the first job that I ever loved. And my job was building this, Nutsies. I knew nothing about art when I took the job. Wasn't particularly interested in it. I was just a laborer, an assistant cutting windows out of paper at $10 an hour. And Tom was a famous artist, no doubt about it. Dozens of assistants worked on Nutsies, but the show was Tom's. And he got the credit. But he included us in the show, and once a week, the assistants could beat him at his own game. If your car was working right, and you were fastest through the bong hit station and the ring of fire, you could get your name on display in a fancy museum too. When Nazis went to Berlin, I became the European champion. In Iowa, the Midwest champion, then the offshore champion. And that's how this whole thing started. Now it was my show on television, and Tom wanted a trophy. I don't think you have any idea how much business I mean. <laughs> It's one week before the nautical challenge and uh, I haven't done any work on my boat. I have no idea what I'm gonna do. But somehow I have to beat Tom Sachs to that lighthouse and back. Maybe Dean could help me. Dean, what are you looking up? Surf jets. There's no websites, there's like six on Google, except one of them has nothing but surf jets for sale. It's basically the Craigslist for surf jets. Dean's our baby brother. And he had ridden all the way up from South Carolina to see us. Because, well, Casey and I almost never visit him. Because preparation for this race was done in secrecy, I had no idea what Tom had up his sleeve. I found out later that he had been working on this race full time for two months and had consulted with two world champion powerboat racers. A week before the race, and all I had was an idea. Look at him surfing. 
and I'd promised Dean a ride. All right, Dean, where are we going? What are we doing? We're going to Charleston. How are we getting there? Motorcycle. Dean's a pilot in the Air Force, so when he goes away, I never know when I'll see him again. Our schedules very rarely line up. This was the first couple days in years where a motorcycle ride together was even a possibility. I was waiting on a check anyway. The race could wait. We just arrived in Charleston, one of the coolest cities I've ever been to. So I bought a mini most on the internet. It's a uh, hydroplane from 1962. It's probably the fastest thing that can go with 10 horsepower. Uh, I also bought a racing catamaran and I'm going to see if that's even faster. From Charleston, I called my new assistant and had her find us a surf jet. Then I said goodbye to Dean. I gotta go to Louisville now to pick up my assistant. Turns out there was a nine and a half horsepower surf jet for sale in Wisconsin, which meant my assistant, Elsa, in Louisville visiting her parents, was on my way to the surf jet. It also meant I could ride the tail of the dragon on my way to Louisville, which had been a dream of mine. Meanwhile, I knew Tom was working on his boat. That means I'm in Louisville. Elsa just called Wisconsin. What did you find out? I found out that uh, we found our we found our boat. I called Casey to find out if our check had cleared. So next stop is uh, Wisconsin. I'm so excited, we just saw it in the window. Wait till you see how cool my boat is. This is the little shop where my boat is located and I will show you what my boat looks like. That's me and that is the sax killer. This is a surf jet. It's basically a heavy duty surfboard with a tiny jet ski engine and a lanyard control with electric start, throttle, and kill switch. I rode one on China Lake in Maine when I was 15, and I've never seen one since. Tom and I agreed to start the race on shore. I thought a quick start was the key. This is why I went with the surf jet. The 85 pound surf jet would be faster to drag into the water. The electric starter would buy me a few seconds. Or I could have the boat running, buying me even more time. It's cooler. And hey, I've always wanted one.
It's about 17 hours before uh, race time. My boat's all prepped. I've run it today. It's starting nicely. It's about two and a half hours before race time and I'm headed to the beach. One hour till race time. 50 minutes until the beginning of the race. 25 minutes till the race begins. No sign of Tom. Two minutes till the race begins. Two minutes to race time, no sign of Tom. Now, Tom is one of these guys who is almost always late. My dad said I should wait for Tom. I said, fuck him. I was in Wisconsin four days ago, and I was ready for the horn. Get ready! Here comes Tom! Is that him? Yeah. Oh, that thing's faster than Then <laughs> get ready! He has 500 bucks on this. What's the time? Give me that horn! Give me that horn! Oh, time has to go through too. It's the clock started! 45 seconds. Yeah, that's good. 30 seconds. 30 seconds! Tom, your hand has to be on the wall! Your boat has to be out of the wall! 20 seconds! Tom, your boat has got to be out of the water! Hand on the wall! 15 seconds! 5, 4, 3, 2, 1! Your boat is not out of the water at disqualification. Nose of the boat at the water line. Tom, you've got to touch the wall! And Tom is off. Tom is starting 46 seconds behind Van. Tom is still working on getting his boat in the water, straightening the boat. Tom is now in his boat. One minute, and four seconds behind there. He's got to lower his boat. He's got to lower his motor. One minute and sixteen seconds behind. Tom is significantly faster than Van. This whole thing seems really kind of dumb. I don't feel like I'm making anything. I'm just running around back and forth to Long Island, spending thousands and thousands of dollars for incremental improvements. I'll win the race, but at what cost? This whole thing was kind of dumb. And that's what I loved about it. Tom spent his entire summer driving back and forth to Long Island preparing for this race, and it didn't sound like he had much fun. I wanted to win, sure, but not more than I wanted to see my brother off to war and ride the tail of the dragon and see the birthplace of Hunter Thompson. In the end, the hare won this race. 
and Tardy Tom beat Van the Tortoise by 10 seconds. And you know what? Tom deserved to win. I did feel bad about Casey losing that 500 bucks he bet on me, though. Well, uh... And thank you, Van. <laughs> Because Tom is such a good friend, he gave me this beautiful trophy. And he's a world famous artist. So it's probably worth more than the five grand I spent on the nautical challenge. Worth more to me anyway. But it sure would have been nice to win. <laughs>